Zed has been popping on and off my radar for a few good years. Almost two years ago, I stumbled across a blog post called From Vim to Zed. I thought, sure, another one. But the writer was Thorsten Ball, PhD, building compilers, a known gopher and Vimmer, and I was intrigued. So I read on, and I gotta say, I was hooked. It felt like he was reading me, celebrating Vim, using it for well over a decade, reading the same niche posts, hearing Drew Neal's voice. In this video, we'll look at how the normal mode paste command works in a terminal buffer. Who I watched hundreds of times, and his book actually got me into Vim in the first place. Thorsten also mentioned learning tricks from Gary Bernhardt, following every move of TJ, and more. But then he got into why he's moving to Z. I thought, well, yeah, because you work there. But he went on. Modern, written in Rust, open source, and most importantly, Vim first. I wanted to try. And so I did. But honestly, couldn't see the appeal. Life happened, I went back to my good old ways, and so did Thorsten, it appears. Shortly after the post went out, I saw a video by someone you probably already know. All right, from Vim to Zed. Around 20 years of using Vim in December. By the way, if you guys don't know Thorsten Ball, Thorsten Ball is awesome. Literally reading the same text and commenting on it. So I reread it with him again. And maybe it was Christmas magic because a week later, an email popped in my mailbox with an invitation. I responded with the same story I just told you and asked whether it was relevant. This was their response. So is that good enough to convert a decade of NeoVim to a GUI based editor? Is it really that fast? What about the extension problem it has? Let's get into it. Zed, as mentioned, is a cross-platform Rust from scratch open source code editor. It's from the team of Atom, the wonderful old editor we all used at some point. Atom was stopped in 2022, Zed was announced a year later, and also open sourced. Sequoia, famously one of the first investors in Apple, led $32 million investment in Zed in 2025, so you can assume it's just swarming engines. It's interesting that the first thing, literally the welcoming screen in Z, is showing off the speed of the editor, shifting open tabs no less. This thing was built and is marketed to touch developers' hearts, not anyone else. It's used and praised by large teams and pretty well-known figures and comes with all the bells and whistles one can expect. But it also comes with those you don't really expect. Let me show you. Install it any way you like and once you pop it open, you'll want to install its CLI. Yes, Zed comes with its own command line utility because they want to win me over. Amongst many other useful options, you could set Zed as your editor and var to make it pop with any demanding applications like kubectl edit, for example. If you have your Zed fully configured, it'll just work with anything out of the box so you don't have to go back to something else from the terminal. The interface itself isn't jaw dropping, but it really shouldn't be. Personally, I like the lean first look, but I have to be the nerd that checks whether it's as fast as they show on the main page first thing. Four tabs, or buffers, not sure yet about the concepts, but that's all I need. With V mode already turned on, don't worry, we'll get there. I can use square bracket and B to travel across the open buffers, and this works flawlessly. But in order to have them loop indefinitely, we'd need the actual shortcut, command shift square bracket, and nice. Gotta check that in NeoVim, sorry, hang on. I'll even pop the exact same four files, we'll add a small normal mapping, and yeah, not bad. Even a tiny bit of a feeling that Z does this quicker. Who cares? Both are great. Moving on. Command J hides your bottom dock. This could be the terminal, a debug console, both of which we'll get into. The next and most important shortcut in the entire app is the command palette. Command Shift P for Mac users opening up, well, everything in one palette, whether shortcuts, key maps, or commands, it's all there. The settings file is your Z config that by default sits in your .files config path under Z settings JSON, and you can pretty much set anything you want through here. Many other GUI based IDEs don't have that feature, which is another huge plus if you're coming from these. My V mode is already on together with a cat pitching theme and a bunch of other options. The defaults for vmode are very impressive, as someone who tried these on VS Code probably 7 years ago and on JetBrains and other IDEs, Z are by far the most impressive. As Thorsten mentioned, it's not a 100% vim alternative, but it's close enough. Square bracket D can go to the next and previous diagnostics, and obviously the document navigation with GG, or Shift G, and other options like that. Text objects also work great. I can visually select around functions or change inside them. You'll also note the ghost text coming from AI, actually their own self-trained model, which I didn't really have to do anything to have. We'll put a pin in that. 
There's git hints, where you can hover over them and get the commit, PR and timestamp. Not something I haven't seen in Neovim 2, but again, out of the box, fully operational. If there's one thing I absolutely miss at this point is my fuzzy finder. Whether Telescope or FZF Lua, Z has an open issue around it. But in the meantime, command P opens a file search box. Not a fuzzy finder, but nevertheless helpful in navigation, much more than the tree on the side panel. Okay, what else should we verify? Macros. Well, let's record adding comment works. What about jump lists? Well, control O and I both work as well as expected. Honestly, I almost feel at home. Apart from a few small minors, given I didn't even install a single plugin yet, nor did I have to port any special Vim configs, this is pretty wild. So let's talk about these key maps, shall we? There's a key map editor in the UI where you can view, search, update, or delete every single configuration. But you know what I'm missing? My beloved JJ or JK, the improved version. Let's see how these are set in Z as an example. You open the key map file, pick a context. In this case, the editor and V mode should be insert, then add the bindings. This is slightly different than NeoVim, which is understandable. I'll add a JK as well, but what the hell, it's not actually working. Well, it took me some time, including a bunch of Z restarts, to figure out that Z respect space is a separator. So JJ, as fast as you may type it, is still a pair of characters following each other, not a simultaneous hit. So adding a space and we're good. Command Shift H opens the text search on files. Another feature that makes me miss telescope. For splits, I can bother with the shortcut, but I can just pop the command palette again and ask for it. The funny thing is, trying to navigate between panes, I naturally went to muscle memory from NeoVim using Control W for window management, and a motion HJKL, and there we are, moving between panes. Slick. Why don't I try to split it too? Control W and S. Boom, splits, C closes it, just as I used to know. I swear I didn't touch a single config and most of it is already doing an amazing job. Neovim users should feel right at home. Would I be happy porting my keymap configuration like this one from my existing Neovim setup? Well, first I didn't have to. Most of it feels like it's already there, but we all love to tinker and rise the setup. Of course, it will come. So this isn't the most convenient way to do things for someone who's used to Neovim setup, but it isn't bad. However, I can still call Gemini on my Neovim config and ask it to build a keymap object ready for Z from my local configuration files, which it does exceptionally. Honestly, I went through these and they're mostly lazy Vim defaults, which are already there. I mean, to the point of hitting colon and exclamation mark and asking for a shell command to run. This is really, really an exceptional Vim experience. What about Git then? Z comes with its own Git integration tools. If you make changes, you can see them lined up, explore and commit. Nothing crazy, if I'm honest and pretty much expected, but it's good to know it's there regardless. With AI, we can generate commit messages, taking the shred of dignity we had by also taking over the text in our commit descriptions. Remember command J toggling your bottom dock? Well, the left one is toggled with command B. And when everything's gone, that's when I feel I can actually focus. With the UI clean, we can move over to Zed's most raved feature, its multi-cursor option. Again, not something you haven't seen before, but works by default and works great with Ctrl D over a word. The cool thing, this works across different files too. I have to be honest and say that I prefer the code rename option on Neovim as it comes with context of the surrounding code and yes, I may be butchering an existing set feature I don't know about, but this is my first thought. Still, I have to admire the variety of default options here. I know I'm repeating it endlessly, but you have to admit, if you had an enormous amount of plugins and setups to configure before you had your machine ready to go and you got a new system to work with, will you reconfigure everything or just use something that does everything already out of the box? What if you only got this new machine for two days of work? Would you still bother? I think it's time for some AI. And before we brutally engage in nasty vibe coding, Z comes with AI integrated. The most important of all is their open source predictions. Zeta, or Zeta, their open source model available on Hugging Face, powers the suggestions you've seen so far. The two major benefits I see here is one, the speed. It's trained, built and run for speed of creation, giving you smart predictions with a model trained on dedicated dataset. The second, it's free, not forever, according to this post, but as long as Zeta is in beta, and for the time being, it's free to use. You can dive deeper in this post, but I want to show you how it's threaded through everything in Z. There's AI helpers, agents, even in your terminal. They work by default with Cloud Sonnet, can work inline or as a general assistant. Everything is configured through the settings panel. Under AI, you have both prediction and other options. 
Now, in my opinion, one of the most important skills when using AI to code is the long forgotten concept of pair programming, or to put more accurately, another pair of eyeballs on the either incredibly stupid or amazingly genius piece of feature AI just helped create. Well, that comes with collaboration. Yes, you guessed it, it's built in. So much so that if you pop the collab doc with command C, sign in quickly and can already see a bunch of live channels you can join in. Jump into public calls or add your own contacts and start chatting with your teammates, sharing your screen and having their input. Incredibly significant and overlooked feature in my opinion. You can also configure a proxy or your own Z server if you like to set it up as an extra security measure. When you do find the bug with your teammates, you're going to want to have some serious tooling to help you clean it. I made a video about debuggers in general and in Neovim specifically, and Z works fairly similarly as other IDEs. Use a shortcut or hit the bug icon on the bottom right corner, create a new debug session, add breakpoints and track the process. Z comes with DAP ready to go. Before we can vibe code a feature, a terminal is something I personally cannot forego. Zed's internal option doesn't disappoint. There's my initial popping below, but guess what? This little star gives you inline terminal AI help. Any of you thinking of warp by any chance? Run my Go project is translated to a command, as well as any other input I give it. Right, main course. Can the fastest GUI-based IDE that just killed Warp, a bunch of other IDEs, and maybe Neovim for some, can also kill Cursor, Windsurf, and their friends? The agent panel is your main gateway to interacting with LLMs. Zed has a pro plan with their hosted models that you can get free for like two weeks or BYOK, is this a thing already? Bring your own keys with whatever plan you already have. Also, Zed supports terminal agents like Cloud CLI, Gemini and Codex, all of which are included in. On a personal note, I've been using both Codex and Gemini through the CLI recently to ship production features. It wasn't perfect, but with a little review and catching some incredibly risky changes in time, I managed to condense weeks of work into days. To be perfectly honest, it's the cursor experience in a much, much faster IDE, not an expensive VS Code fork, taking the context in, iterating over problems, setting permissions. I mean, let's debate in the comments. I don't ever see a reason to use any other so-called agentic IDE ever again. Let's talk about pricing for a minute. With $10 a month, including unlimited predictions, but a rather limited token usage for general use. And then when you pass that, it's the API list price with 10% on top. The list of supported providers is extensive enough, and among them you can find open router if you need more. Z can be free. It's also important to remember that Z can be used without any AI features at all, just as a fast coding editor. I would also highly recommend Zed's blog where they both announce new features, dive deep into exotic options and share general thoughts. There's also an extensive list of extensions as one would expect with themes, language supports, MCPs and more. Okay, the million dollar question. Is this enough for me to switch? Well, yes and no. I've been paying for an AI platform, more than one, to be honest, over a year now. I had Cursor for a while, paid for open code. I have both Codex and Gemini, as mentioned, and I share a lot on this channel as I experience them. Zed has its drawbacks. It's not Neovim, nor does it mean to be. My Neovim isn't going anywhere, but for the agents panel process, the warp-like terminal options, all in a blazing fast package, Vim support, on par with Neovim, built in with everything I went through in this video, it definitely stays. If you liked it, but you're more of a terminal person, I highly recommend my favorite terminal agent experience so far, open code. Check it out in this video next. You can keep both due to the flexible billing and pay for what you use. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.